Baker Mayfield. Now, he was on the uh, You Know What I Mean podcast, and he was asked if he felt that the team's acquisition of Deshaun Watson was disrespectful. And he said, I feel disrespected 100%. Now, obviously, this is a strange situation, right? Because he was the starting quarterback, and they brought in another starter right behind him. Uh, He said, I was told one thing. They completely did another. That's what I'm in the middle of right now. Um, And then he goes on and talks about, uh, and I don't say the quotes right now, but what exactly was it? Um, It was basically... Like, he doesn't know where he's going to play, or he he was whining about, uh, I would love to see anybody uh, come into their cubicle and get booed in their own office and and see them falter like the way that I was doing. Uh, he said, I'm just looking for stabilization right now. I know what I need to do for me to be the best version of me and to be able to lead an organization. He said, I'm in a good place right now. I have no clue where I'm going. I'm curious your thoughts on this because – this just all comes across as whining to me. They wouldn't have had yeah. to go look for another quarterback if you had played up to the level that you we think are capable of playing or that they need their quarterback to be capable of playing, right? Like it, what people get booed all the time. Like what is he talking about? Yeah. No, well he de- he doesn't live in the real world. He's never lived in the real world. This guy's this guy like I know that he didn't have a scholarship and all this stuff. Since his days in Oklahoma, this guy has been cheered his entire life since then, okay? He's been celebrated every day since his days in Oklahoma, all right? And now you're in the professional world, okay? It is the the duty to the other players on the team to put the best roster together that you possibly can. So let's, let's take the Deshaun Watson factor into this. Had they went out and got Russell, this is the question that I would ask. Had they went out and got a guy like Russell Wilson, the classiest of classy individuals who, who has who has no skeletons in his closet, no red flags whatsoever, if they went out and got an upgrade like that, would you still feel disrespected? Or is this a Deshaun Watson, I can't believe I'm a choir boy and, and he's, you know, a troublemaker and, and they went and got a guy like that? So that would be a question that I would ask because if it's distrust about football, then let's talk about football. And if it's just the character of a man, then you got to understand at some point in time, those other 53 men in the locker room don't give a shit about the character because their paycheck, their families determine on winning and losing. Okay. And they want the best guy to team up with that they can so they can support themselves. All right. Because not everybody's got these $90 million TV deals from Progressive. Okay. Nope. Not everybody else gets that. So, that would be my argument to, to is this a football thing or not? Because if it's about football, it's the team's duty to put together the best roster they can. And if they can get an upgrade, nobody would argue that Deshaun Watson is not a massive, not a small upgrade, a massive upgrade from an X's and O standpoint. Now, let's get to Baker and his emotion. I have used the phrase, and I will continue to use the phrase, Baker's biggest problem is Baker goes on social media goes on these podcasts, goes on wherever he can get a voice, which he has a loud voice, and he has access to a massive platform, and he just menstruates him, his, his emotions, his feelings, all over the place, all the time. <laughs> and it's really old, and it wears on people. Now, if you do that, and you're great, people will overlook it. If you do that, and you're average, they, they just can't handle it, okay? You know the reason... Ryan Tannehill and Kirk Cousins keep their jobs and keep their paychecks coming every year, week in and week out. You know, you know the reason of that? Because they say nothing. They say nothing. They are average, they are mediocre, and they keep their damn mouth shut. Okay? They go out there and they roll out an eight and eight or a, or a, or a you know, whatever record every year, and nobody says boo about it. But you roll out these same resumes with, you know, some great stats, some terrible stats, just like both those guys. And, and you are pu- not, not just publicly criticized for it. Now, there's not a single one of the other 31 teams calling the Browns interested in you. He, he will be lucky to get a backup role, and he is a starting Yes. There aren't 32 other men on the planet better at quarterback 
than he is right now in the NFL, but it's his attitude and his distraction. How do you walk into a locker room and claim that you're a leader when all you do is whine and cry and also not take personal responsibility for things? I understand that the deck was stacked against you. I understand that you got drafted to a garbage football team in a in a program that never wins. I understand that you went through four head coaches in four years and, and all these OCs. I understand that all those things happen, all right? But at some point in time, you have to take responsibility. You have to say you play better. Now you're using the excuse that you played hurt all last year. But then last year, we have clips of you saying, I'm not playing hurt. If I didn't think I was 100% or couldn't give the team 100%, I wouldn't be out there. I'm, I'm playing because it's, my, it's 100% my call. There's clips of him saying these things. So uh, are you going to use the excuse or was it 100% your call? Because you don't get it both ways, man. You just don't. Now he's just trying to say whatever uh, he thinks the people around him would like him to say. And that is a problem. Uh, I will. I do find this interesting because this is a quick way to lose a locker room. You are still on the roster, like. Well, but no, he's not. He's not on the roster. He won't even take a practice snap. If nobody trades for him after the draft, he'll be released. You he, think he so? Will. I don't care if Deshaun Watson is suspended for sixteen games or seventeen games the whole season next year. They they will go into this this season with Jacoby. Uh, 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 as as their quarterback, Brissett yeah. as their quarterback, and and that'll be what they will do because um, he he will not take another step as a Browns. They are just hoping that they get a draft week trade, a draft weekend trade. Somebody will make a move for him, and they can get something for him. But if that doesn't happen, he will be released. And I'm very curious. Once he's released, will anybody pick him up? Yeah, I I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree because I I don't know of anybody that wants this in their locker room. I'm going to tell you this. If you're Tyler Lockett, you're DK Metcalf sitting in Seattle, you, you're not real happy with the Drew Locke situation. Agreed. But but I guarantee you those two guys would probably say, I'll take my chances with a guy like Drew who so far has just been a battler and a warrior fighting for a spot than a guy who feels like the keys should have been handed to me and no competition should be given. In every criticism, he just shows up somewhere on some platform whining and crying about it. It just blows my mind. Like, I don't understand how, if you're Baker Mayfield, you know that you're a starter. Uh, just say that you welcome the competition. Like, we've seen this before. Teams have paid yep. quarterbacks a ton of money. If you were hurt last be year. Like, yep. Yeah, because look at Matt Flynn. You talked about Seattle. Mm-hmm. I mean, Russell Wilson comes in as a third-round draft pick and beats him out. And wins the job. You know, if, if you want to do something, like go out and prove it on the field. Don't just think that they should have handed you the keys. Like, my gosh, they're trying to get better. Like, but he's meant, oh, listen, Baker's a great athlete. Baker's a hell of a ball player. Baker's about middle-of-the-pack quarterback, which is not – there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Yeah. There's not a shame in that. But middle-of-the-pack quarterback with all this baggage, don't get it done. It just don't. Nope. I'm going to tell you this, and, and I know this ain't going to go over real well with a lot of people. If you told me I'm in Seattle right now, I got DK Metcalf, I got Tyler Lockett sitting here saying, hey, what are we going to do, coach? I Give give me Colin Kaepernick that hadn't taken a snap in three years, and but also hadn't taken a hit in three years, who's completely healthy over a Baker Mayfield who is this mentally weak and coming off of whatever surgery or rehab that he's having to do. Give that to me all day long. And you say, okay, that goes well because it's in Seattle. Put that shit in Nashville and give me the same thing. If Ryan Tannehill fell off the world tomorrow, okay, and, and your two options were in, 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 the, in the heart of the deep south were Colin Kaepernick or Baker Mayfield, I'm telling you, Colin would shut a lot of people up because I think he'd be better than Baker. And at least he's going to go out there and compete. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is that – I don't know that Kaepernick would come out and complain the way that the Baker does. Now, obviously, well, Kaepernick no, has not. done his. No, his just, hey, Kaepernick has he, complained yeah. uh, over Kaepernick the past several years, focused, but, but, it, but it hasn't you know. been anything about stuff like this. It hasn't yeah. been about his criticism. It hasn't been no. It hasn't been about this stuff. Okay, so, agreed. But this, I hey, can disagree with a lot of things with with, with Colin, but at the same time, 
we, we can understand that we're just trying to make the football team better. Okay, That's our only objective, is making this football team better. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.